As the coronavirus currently threatens America, London was terrorized by cholera in the 1800s. A pioneering doctor and a priest teamed up to offer a better understanding of how the disease spread, using visual tools in a way that numbers alone could not. London had the largest concentration of people in the world, and was overcrowded, dirty, and extremely foul-smelling. It had no public sewers. People disposed of their waste in basement cesspools that drained into open street trenches. Animals ran freely and added their excrement to the stench from the Industrial Revolution. Many houses even had dairy cows in their attics. In other words, London reeked. Diseases spread like wildfire every four years. The prevailing wisdom was that they spread through smelly air, known as the miasma. John Snow, a young anesthesiologist and prolific inventor, thought it wasn't actually air, but water that was spreading disease. He wrote many papers presenting his data in precise tables, trying to convince his colleagues but it was too hard to upset the common notion that all smell is disease. On Monday August 28, at 40 Broad Street in the poor neighborhood of Soho, Sarah Lewis was caring for her sick baby girl by washing out her dirty nappies in pails of water, and then emptying them into her basement cesspool. That Saturday the six-month-old child succumbed to cholera, followed by her father a week later. By then, over 10% of the neighborhood had died and many families fled. Soho was a virtual ghost town. The Lewis family's cesspool was a mere three feet from the water supply that provided water to a popular water pump. People from all over Soho flocked to the Broad Street pump because the water tasted better. As it turned out, the cesspool was leaking directly into the pump's water source. Snow thought this was an ideal opportunity to prove his waterborne theory. He walked the 12 blocks from his upscale Mayfair house to Soho. Armed with a list of deaths, he interviewed people and became convinced that the water pump was the source of the infection. He was able to persuade the city to remove the pump's handle. Almost immediately, deaths began to decline. Unfortunately, people still clung to their belief that the smell was the source of the infection. He teamed up with a popular local priest, the Reverend Henry Whitehead to collect more data. Over the following year, they amassed a list of 700 names and addresses of victims. This time, rather than publish the findings in a table, Snow marked each death as a thin black bar on a map where they had lived. The results were visually striking and convinced the city that cholera was indeed waterborne. That marked the end of cholera outbreaks in London as the city urged people to do things like boiling their water to combat the disease. So. A picture is indeed worth more than a thousand numbers.